Welcome to our lecture online. In the previous video, we looked at one dimensional momentum, momentum in just one dimension. But here we're going to take a look at what happens when we have collisions and the objects move in two dimensions. So we have three examples on the board to go through. The first example, we have an object at rest, M2, and an object moving to the right towards M2. But notice it's not a head-on collision, it's a side or a glancing blow collision. And so after the collision, M1 will then ricochet off in that direction, M2 will then fi uh, find itself moving in that direction. The way we solve that type of problem is by setting up two equations, one where the momentum is conserved in the x direction and one where momentum is conserved in the y direction. However, what we see here is we'll end up with four unknowns. And so obviously with only two equations, you can't solve something with four unknowns. So typically in the problem, they give you two of those four unknowns. So let's take a look. In the x direction, notice that only one object is moving to the right, so it has its initial momentum of m times v. The second object is now moving, so there's no momentum associated with that. So on the left side of the equation, we get the initial momentum, which is only, only the momentum of the first object. But after they both collide, they both, both move out, they notice that in the x direction, the momentum vector for m1 will be m1 times the velocity in the x direction, which is the final velocity times the cosine of that angle. For m2, notice that also the final momentum in the x direction will be m times velocity in the, uh, the final velocity times the cosine of that angle. Now notice there's four unknowns, v1 final, v2 final, cosine theta 1, cosine theta 2. So typically what they will do is they'll give you both angles and ask you to find the final two velocities, or they give you the final velocities and ask you for the angles, or they give you one of the velocities and one of the angles, and you're supposed to find the second velocity and the second angle. How do you do that? How do you solve that with two unknowns? Well, you have an equation in the y direction as well. The momentum before the collision in the y direction is zero because this object is moving only in the x direction and this object is not moving. So there's no momentum in the y direction. After the collision, notice that the component of the momentum of m1 is in the positive direction. So it's m1 times v1, v1 final times the sine of the angle theta1. And here the y component of the momentum in the y direction is negative. It's in the down direction. So it's minus m2 v2 final times the sine of that angle. So now if two of those four unknowns are given with the two equations, we can solve for the other two unknowns. But sometimes you have two objects that are moving towards one another, collide, and they move away from each other in two dimensions. So that equation would now become, in the x direction, you take the x components of these two objects moving to the right. They're both positive. So we have m1 v1 initial times the cosine of that angle, plus m2 v2 initial times the cosine of the second angle. So now we have the momentum initially before the collision, in the x direction and in the y direction again you take the x components of these two notice their boat will be to the right and so you end up with m1 v1 final times the cosine of that angle final plus m2 v2 final times the cosine of that angle final so now notice we have a total of eight unknowns so obviously six of those eight need to be given to you typically they give you the initial velocities and initial angles and then they'll give you two of the final two unknowns either both angles, both velocities, or one velocity and one angle, so you can solve the other two unknowns. But again, since there's two unknowns, you will need a second equation. So now you find the conservation of momentum in the y direction. So in the y direction, this one is moving downward, so it's minus m1 v1 initial times the sine of the angle, and this one is moving upward, so it's plus m2 v2 times the sine of the angle. That equates to the final momentum. In the final momentum, this object is moving upwards, so that's positive, m1 v1 final times the sine of theta1 final, and this one is moving downwards, so it's minus m2 v2 final times the sine of the angle final. The last example is where we have a glancing blow with two objects moving towards each other in the x direction. So in the x direction, we end up initially with m1 v1 initial, because it's moving to the right, minus m2 v2 initial because it's moving to the left. After the collision, they move out at an angle, so we take the x component of this one and the x component of that one, so we end up with m1 v1 final times the cosine of the angle, minus, because this one is moving to the left, m2 v2 final times the cosine of the angle. 
and then again they will probably give you the initial velocities of both objects and they will give you two of the four final unknowns. Either they give you the two angles, the two velocities, or one velocity and one angle. But since there's still two unknowns, you will have to set up a second equation, and so let's set up the concentration of momentum in the y direction. Since they're moving initially in the x direction, there's no initial momentum in the y direction, but afterwards, this object has a component moving up, this object has a component moving down, so it's plus m1 v1 final times the sine of the angle, and here, since it's moving in the negative direction, minus m2 v2 final times the sine of the final angle. Uh, or, well, we don't... Yeah, we didn't have any initial angles, so I didn't mark them as final angles. It's theta 1 and theta 2. So these are three very typical examples you might run into with objects colliding with one another. There's two, two dimensions involved, so you'll have to set up conservation of momentum equations in both the x and the y directions, and then solve them simultaneously. And that is how it's done.